Absence truly does make the heart grow fonder. And since love is in the air, we can't help but wonder. Welcome to Mojo Plays. I'm Ricky. And I'm Emily. And together we're highlighting 10 video game characters we wish could be our Valentine. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the NPCs that we would love to start an in-game relationship with, but we're sadly unable to. And we're going to take turns here to talk about our ideal bachelors and bachelorettes. Understandable, but not acceptable. So my first pick is Varl, Horizon Zero Dawn. Bring it closer! Closer! It's honestly a real shame that for such an immersive RPG, Horizon didn't have any romance options. Because damn are there a lot of fish to choose from. There is a Vod who's very noble and mature for his age, not to mention the very little fact that, well, he's a king. But Varl is just too adorable not to pass off. Sounds like a plan. So long as I get to come with you. It takes almost no skill to be BFFs with him, and he outright says he would get on his knees and worship us. Sure, his conservative fear of foreign tribes would be a hurdle, but also seems like nothing we can't help him overcome. Horizon's director Herman Holst has stated that romance options are certainly on the table for the sequel. Do it! I hope that today is just a sunrise for us. Not a goodbye. Lace Harding, Dragon Age, Inquisition. <laughs> When did you come up with that one? I had some time along the way. Damn it, Bioware, don't give us such a fun and lovable character as well as the option to flirt with her if it's not going to go anywhere. As the Inquisition's main scout, Harding introduces us to each location we visit across Thetis, and each time we're given the option to charm her. Really? Wow, I'm stunned and flattered and a little bit afraid. Given her steamy responses, one would assume that she'll be given the same treatment as other romance options and be given an emotionally investing questline. No such luck. Heck, in the Trespasser DLC, if you don't pursue anyone beforehand, it's hinted that you did enter a relationship. Except, we don't get to see any of it. Lame. We are, aren't we? Such a shame our meetings are so brief. Nick Valentine. Fallout 4. But I guess folks never forgot I rescued the mayor's daughter, so they started coming to me when people went missing. They since have feelings too. Granted, Nick isn't well built together, but he still managed to deliver in the personality department. As a detective operating out of Diamond City, Nick's affinity for hacking, dry quips, and chewing out synth haters made for quite the entertaining companion. What the hell is that thing doing here? Not what your parents used to say to you? However, no matter how chummy the Soul Survivor gets, there's no chance of winning his robotic heart. Which is a shame given how a possible human-synth relationship would have made for some compelling storytelling. Plus, that accent. Hot damn that accent. Yeah, that is if you're, if you're still interested in traveling together. Mifa, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. I was thinking, this reminds me of the time we first met. Is it just us, or does everyone want a piece of Link in this game? Granted, we all know that Zelda normally takes priority when it comes to earning his affections, but come on, how can anyone say no to Mifa? The beloved princess of the Zora, she happened to harbor some pretty deep feelings for our mute hero, but was unable to express them before her tragic demise. Perhaps we could spend some time together. Regardless, she still left quite the impact on Link and the fandom as a whole, so much so that while Zelda is all well and good, we were practically begging for the chance to romance this poor fish girl. Just look at that face. We'll annihilate Ganon together. Farewell. Theo, Celeste. Honestly, how could Madeline not end up with Theo at the end of a dangerous mountain climb? Not only is he an Instagram, sorry, insta pic celebrity, but also he's such a sweetheart. He's a great conversationalist. He can help us overcome the most stressful of situations, and he offers to take Madeline's heavy backpack just before she reaches the summit. Plus, he's a cat lover, and most important of all, he knows how to make a strawberry keeperina. It may be corny, but we would be eager to shout YOLO with him if we had the chance. Chidori Yoshino, 
Shin Megami Tensei, Persona 3. Once I become attached to something, I fear that I will lose it. Not being a jerk or anything, but Junpei? Really? That's who she fell for? As a member of Strega, Chidori utilizes the power of her persona for less than benevolent deeds, though these start to change when she and Junpei start to become close. I'll protect you, Junpei. Always. Uh, I'll protect you too! With such a tortured psyche, shown through her constant self-harming, by the time she ends up sacrificing herself for a new love interest, we were all left pretty much thinking the same thing. Why the hell couldn't we max our social link with her instead of freaking Junpei? This is seriously the happiest moment of my life! Morden Solis, Mass Effect series. Of course, hormones. We'll be here to set broken bones later. He may be the very model of a scientist Solarian, but he also could have made for one of the most investing romance options available for Commander Shepard. Think about it. Not only would it be hilarious to hear him babble about the science of interspecies SpaceX, but imagine if we had the opportunity to sing Gilbert and Sullivan songs with him in the Citadel DLC. I am the very model of a scientist Solarian. I've studied species Turian, Asari, and Batarian. Though well, that of course brings us to his ultimate fate in Mass Effect 3. How much more heartbreaking would his death have been if you had romanced him? Ugh, that chance for a duet we'll never get. I'm quite good at genetics as a subset of biology because I am an expert which I know is a tautology. Sadie Adler, Red Dead Redemption 2. Aside from my Jake, you're the best man I've known. To be honest, any of the ladies in the Vanderlyn camp would have been a far better choice for Arthur rather than trying to get back with his ex. I mean, what were you thinking, bro? I think I need to be alone for a bit. I understand. There could have been potential to get together with Karen, Mary Beth, or Tilly, though for most players, the ideal match would have been Sadie. For one, she's an amazing gunslinger, she's incredibly loyal, and she looks damn good in a man's shirt. True, she recently lost her husband, but given what happens to Arthur late in the game, it's not like he would have had much time. Mrs. Adler. <laughs> Ride with me! Ah! Keith David, Saints Row 4. Keith, I think you have some unresolved issues. You don't know what happened, the kid. So let's get this straight. You can pretty much hook up with every member of your crew, one of whom happens to be a giant floating robotic eye, regardless of gender and sexuality. And yet we still can't get down and dirty with Keith frickin' David? That's beyond unfair. It just wouldn't work between us, you see? How can you give us the option to bang everyone from Kinsey to Johnny with no consequence, yet exclude the voice of the Arbiter and David Anderson? How could you? It's not like you guys were trying to make the experience as realistic as possible to begin with. If I want to ship the president and vice president, wait, scratch that. Ceres on Crate, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. And I count on you to help me fulfill that dream. Ceres! 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 If there's two things that Geralt of Rivia is known for, it's slaying monsters and engaging in sexy times with the ladies of the Northern Kingdoms. Whether it's his old flame Yennefer, his favorite bunk buddy Triss Marigold, or a whole slew of others, the White Wolf certainly gets around. That is, except for this possible ruler of Skellige. So, for this to work, if either of us has an idea, we can't tell the other one about it. Exactly. Known as Sparrowhawk to her friends, this spunky yet cunning young woman sounds like an ideal romance option. Nope. Apparently, Geralt prefers his ladies from up north, which kinda sucks for the rest of us. Sadly, this time it didn't work. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.